Welcome to 5.3's Math Moment. Today's students continue to learn about long division, and this time they divided with two-digit divisors, so that's a two-digit number on the outside of the division problem, which is quite a bit trickier and more challenging than just using a one single digit. So they learned a strategy today that kind of had them estimate or do kind of a guess and check system um, because they cannot think of those, or it's really hard to think of the multiples of a double-digit number in your head. So we did kind of some different guessing and checking and looking at estimating those numbers to try and figure out what would be the best way to start. So we're going to look at a couple different examples. This first one is 634 divided by 14. So students were asked to kind of think about 14. All right, 14 is pretty close to 15, obviously. It's pretty close to 10 as well. So kind of using that to help them think, how close can 14 get to the number inside? Now, we know right away that 14 is not going to go into 6. So students have gotten really good about placing a 0 there and then just being able to move on and look at the next two numbers. That's what I'm working with next. If I'm not working with 6 anymore, then I'm definitely going to be working with 63. And they could take this zero down to really have them show and see that we're only working with 63. But some of them just like to place a zero on the top and move on. All right, so when we think about, we ask students to really estimate in their head what is a really easy number to work with that's close to 14. My brain goes to 10, and many students might as well. So when I think about the number 10, I know 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, well, 10 times 6 gets me really close to 63, because 10 times 6 is 60. So we might have students, they might want to start um, trying 14 times 6 to see if that gets them pretty close to what they're looking for. 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8. So what they're going to see is that, well, six times is a little bit too big, so I'm going to need to get smaller. Now we always encourage students when they're working with division never to erase a problem that they did already because they might go back to it and use it again later on in the problem. So it's really important to have them keep that work there. So I'm just going to move it to the side and this time I'm going to try 14 times 5. 5 times 4 is 20, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7. That's still just a little bit too much, so I know for sure that the next one's probably going to get me what I want. 14 times 4. 4 times 4 is 6. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Now, that doesn't get me exactly what I want, because I want 63, but it gets me as close as possible without going over to 70. So I'm going to place a 4 on top, because I took 14 times 4, and I know I already did the work. I know that that's 56 and now I get to subtract. So I cannot take 3 minus 6, so I'm going to have to borrow from the 6, making that 3 a 13. 13 minus 6 gives me 7, while 5 minus 5 is 0. My next step is to bring down the 4. Now, that step that I told you that we encourage students to keep their work, if they did some guessing and checking, even if it didn't work for that particular pro uh, part of the problem, it might be useful later on, so we encourage them to leave it there. And in this case, that worked really well for me because the next thing I need to figure out is 14. How many times can it go into 74? Well, I have an answer here that's really close. 14 times 5 is 70. I'm not going to get any closer because I see 14 times 6 is 84. So really the work is already done for me. And that's what we're hoping that students see and that happens to them when they're working on their work because then they'll notice that, hey, I already did that work, I don't want to have to do it again. So it, again, encourage them to not erase any problem that they use. So I already know that 5 times 14 is 70. I subtract 4 minus 0 is 4. 7 minus 7 is 0. Now, I do not have anything else to bring down. I'm finished. I've taken care of every single number here. So this is truly a remainder. It's left over. And in fifth grade, we write those remainders as fractions, or some classroom teachers might have them write it as remainder 4, R4. 
All right, both ways are appropriate. You just need to know what your student's teacher prefers them to do when they're working with division problems. The other way to make sure that you're finished with a division problem, and we see um, students it being really helpful for students to think about, is however many numbers I have on the inside, so in this case I have one, two, three digits, I should have that same amount of numbers up top when I'm done if I truly finished with the problem or I didn't maybe make a mistake by adding something extra in. So again, however many numbers are inside, that many numbers including zeros, should be on the top, and that might help your student realize that they're completed with that problem. So the best way to write this number would either be 45, remainder 4, or 45 and 4 fourteenths, which we know can reduce, <coughs> excuse me, to 45 and 2 sevenths, back when we were learning about fractions. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at example 2. So you'll notice that example two has a different symbol for division um, than what we saw up here in example one and what we're more used to traditionally. But this is just a fraction bar or a backslash, and in math, the students sometimes see it um, because we do want them to remember that any time they're working with a fraction, that top number, what it means is that top number is being divided by the bottom number. So the, a fraction bar does mean division, and in this case, so does this um, backslash here. So we're going to take 2,107 divided by 17. Now again, 17s are really hard to count in your head. For students to know those facts off the bat, it would be pretty difficult. So what we ask them to do is to estimate. Think, what is 17 closer to that really is an easy number to work with? So my brain goes to 20. 17 is pretty close to 20. Now that's obviously more, so I might want to estimate a little bit um, more carefully there, but I'm going to be thinking about this 17 as a 20 just to help me get started. How many times does 17 go into 2? Again, your student might see right away that they can just work with that 0 there and move on to 21. They also might want to go ahead and bring that 0 down and complete the whole process, whatever works best for them. So now I need to think, how many times can 17 go into 21? Well, that's a pretty simple number when I'm thinking about counting by 17s. But if students want to try it out, 17 times 2, just to see if they're not quite sure, then they could go ahead and multiply to see that they're going to get 34 if they used 2. So really, this can only get, um, 17 can only go into 21 one time. Okay, then I would go ahead and subtract. 11 minus 7 is 4. 1 minus 1 is 0 and now I need to bring down my zero. Now again, I don't want them ever to erase any work. I'm gonna encourage them to do that because we might use that fact later on. Now remember that we decided we were gonna think about this 17 as a 20, just to help us kind of get close. Well, the next number we need to get closest to is 40. Well, how many 20s would get us to 40? 20, 40, just two. So taking 17 times two should probably get me pretty close to 40. And it does. 17 times 2 is 34. Now, if your student is not convinced and they're thinking, oh, well, I think we could maybe get closer, you could have them go ahead and try 17 times 3. It's great multiplication practice for them to look at this problem and see, well, which one is our best answer? 51 won't work because it's too much. And with division, we have to get as close as we can, but we cannot go over. So 34 is our best option. So we're going to take it times 2. I've already done the work for 34 and now I get to subtract. I have to borrow from this 4 to make the 0 a 10. 10 minus 4 is 6. 3 minus 3 is 0. And I get to bring down a 7. Now, I have some problems over here that can help me kind of think about how many times 17 can go into 67. I have 17 times 2 is 34. I definitely want to try and get closer. 17 times 3 is 60 or 51. That's pretty close. That might work. But your student will probably want to try 17 times 4 just to make sure that there's nothing they can do to get closer. So 7 times 4 is 28. 4 times 1 is 4. Plus 2 is 6. Oh, and that's so close, except it's 1 over. So 4 would not work. Even though it's that close, it would not work. I would have to use 3. 
And again, this problem, it worked out really, really well for me to have those problems there that I already used to fall back on and to really help my thinking and when um, thinking about picking what numbers would work best. So 7 minus 1 is 6. 6 minus 5 is 1. I do not have anything left to bring down. Every single number in, on the inside has a partner on the top, so I know I've taken care of each number and I don't have anything left over. So this truly is a remainder of 16 over 17 or remainder 16. So my final answer would be 123 and 16 seventeenths or 123 remainder 16. If you have any other questions about 5.3, make sure to see your math teacher.